In this video, I'll show you how to create instructional content with a tablet. Now, if you have an iPad and a stylus and a digital whiteboard app, you can create a lot of really engaging educational content for your viewer. And if you stick around until the end, I will show you a behind the scenes look at my editing process. Now, these types of Khan Academy style videos are great for working through mathematical concepts, showing equations, diagramming scientific processes, or otherwise working through problems with your viewers. I personally rely on this type of video a lot in my biomechanics class, which relies heavily on physics problems and diagrams. So let's take a look at how to create a video using your tablet and a stylus and a digital whiteboard app. Now, there are a lot of note-taking apps out there that are great, such as Microsoft OneNote or even the Notes app from Apple, but I've stuck with the app Notability. It allows me to select different fonts and different colors with enough range and gradient style and the size of the, of the writing from the stylus uh, to suit all of my needs. Plus, my university supplies it for free, so that was an easy decision for me. But pretty much any digital whiteboard app or note-taking app that allows you to write with a stylus will be perfect for this type of video. Now, in any lecture video where you are teaching the audience, it's important for them to engage with you. And that means uh, it's best to show your face in the video. Now, you could just do a screen capture of your iPad as you're working through a problem. However, your audience won't be able to actually see you and see your facial expressions and won't connect with you on that deeper level. And that's what we're all about is not only teaching, but teaching in a relational way. So I find it best uh, to set up a secondary camera, either using a cell phone or a DSLR digital camera, uh, to capture my face as I'm also recording my screen on the tablet. And then that way in post, in the editing software, I can switch back and forth between what's shown on my screen on the tablet and my face, depending on what I want the viewer to focus on. Now, with most tablets, you can't actually record using the forward-facing camera and record the screen at the same time. So I couldn't have my face captured while I'm writing on the tablet from just the tablet, which is what necessitates the use of a secondary camera or phone. Now, I know it might seem like that gets a little bit more complex, but it's, it gives you a more flattering angle because I can adjust the camera to be at the same level as my eyes instead of having that forward facing camera, which is usually often to the left or to the right, depending on which type of tablet you own. And uh, usually it's from below your face. So, you know, people can see up your nose and it just is not a very flattering angle. Now, another thing that this affords you is the ability to cut out mistakes when you have both your uh, camera on your face as well as the screen capture. If you make a mistake or have to do something over, it's a lot easier to make a natural seeming transition and cut out the mistake by switching from what's on screen to your face and vice versa. And it just makes the, the flow of the video that much better. I'll show you how to do all of that uh, at the end of this video. Now, if you are using two cameras, it's important to do some sort of audio visual signal that allows you to line up both clips. And usually that's some sort of a clap so that you can see on screen uh, in your editor when you clap, and then you can line up the audio with that clap and make sure that both of your clips are perfectly in sync when you're editing. Now, the next important step is to capture really crisp audio. Remember that in any video learning environment, audio is at least 50% of the video content. If your viewer has this amazing, you know, high definition uh, visual to look at, but the audio is tinny or raspy, or there's a lot of ambient room noise, that can really be a distraction to the learner. So I advise having some sort of external microphone. Don't just rely on the internal microphone in your tablet or in your camera, but have an external microphone. Personally, I have a mini shotgun microphone that is just about a foot and a half away from my mouth, just out of screen, that's plugged into my DSLR camera that captures my voice, and it does so relatively well. You can also use a Yeti mic or some other type of USB microphone. Uh, as long as it's positioned close to your mouth, it captures high definition audio, and you have some ability to uh, filter out the rest of your room uh, ambient noise. I like directional mics for that reason because uh, just behind the camera, the rest of the office and my colleagues are all working and talking. So a directional boom microphone does a good job for me of only capturing my voice. Now, no matter what type of microphone you use, whether it's a boom microphone or a desktop uh, USB microphone or maybe a lavalier mic, you want to make sure that you set your audio levels in camera uh, to between negative six and negative 12 dBs. That's where you want your uh, 
uh, sound to be when you're speaking. This ensures that your sound is not clipping. You know, it's uh, clipping is when it becomes distorted because the decibel level is too high for the input on your camera and it's not too low because if it's too low then in post you'll have to bring it up and then it captures all of that ambient room noise as well. Now in order to check your audio levels uh, most DSLR cameras have an option to do that on screen uh, however if you're recording to your phone or to your computer you can use an app like Audio Share or Awesome Voice Recorder to check your audio levels before you begin recording your video. Now you're ready to record. So on your tablet, hit screen capture. I'll show you how to do it on an iPad. Uh, make sure that the audio capture is engaged as well so you can line up the audio from your talking head camera and your screen capture in post and begin diagramming whatever it is that you are teaching, whether it's a math problem or a, a scientific concept or some sort of an artistic digital art tutorial. And in the same way that it's important to enunciate and speak clearly when you are speaking directly to an audience, it's important to write clearly in order for your video audience to read what you are putting down on the iPad. It does nobody any good if you're solving the most complex math problem, but nobody can read what you're writing. So make sure that you practice good penmanship, everything is legible and clear. And on a related note, make sure that the color palette that you're using is not too garish in a way that's distracting uh, from the learning that's taking place. Try sticking with a few colors that complement each other well, or perhaps that stand out from each other in order to highlight important concepts. I use the color wheel tool at canva.com or paleton.com for their complementary color picking app, uh, because I don't have an innate sense of color theory, like maybe some of you do, uh, but this helps me make sure that my videos at least look visually appealing and don't detract from the overall learning that's taking place. And finally, remember that because you're recording not only the screen capture, but also your face, you have a lot of options in post-processing to edit out any mistakes that you've made or to take out long pauses where maybe you have to look, look up the next step of the equation that you're writing down. And you also can speed up and slow down parts of your diagram as well. And with both of these video clips uh, in post, you can make those edits and cut cuts look more natural. Now you've set up your video, you've recorded it, and you are ready to edit. The first step is to make sure that you pull in both your talking head video and your screen capture into the editing software. After you've pulled everything into the editing software, we want to align the video clips by stacking them on top of each other in the timeline, and then finding that clap that you did at the beginning uh, and lining up the audio waveforms. So if you line up that clap, then you can be sure that your talking head video and your screen capture are perfectly in sync. And from there you can begin editing. In most video editors, I'm using Adobe Premiere Rush in this video, the top video track is the one that is seen on screen. Now with both of my clips in the editor, I just rewatch the entire video, making cuts at each point where I want the audience to see either just my face or just the screen capture. So because they're both stacked on top of each other, just by cutting the top one out and deleting that portion in the timeline, then the audience will see whatever is on the second layer of video. Or if I leave the top layer in, then they'll see whatever's on the top layer. And because these video clips are aligned, uh, everything's going to be perfectly in sync. Now, if you're editing out a mistake, if you want to completely remove a portion of that timeline, remember that you have to make the cut in both of the video tracks, right? So in the top track and the bottom track so that they remain in sync when you cut out that segment. Now, another option that you have for editing is you can take the uh, video of your face and move it down into the bottom right or bottom left hand corner or maybe one of the top corners so that the audience can continually see your face as you are writing. However, I don't really like to do this because anytime I'm writing on my tablet, my head is down and uh, they can't actually see my facial expressions. It's not until I pause and I look up from what I'm doing that and, and I dr address the audience directly that they can actually see my face in that camera. So I find it best to switch back and forth in between. However, depending on your use cases and what you are teaching, it, it may make more sense for you to continually sh show your face as you're working through the problem. So that is also an option. Now the last editing tip that I have for you is to consider slowing down or speeding up certain portions of your diagramming or your math equation as you're writing it down. Sometimes there can be a lengthy sentence 
uh, or series of things that you're writing out and maybe you've already explained it and you just need to get it down on the tablet, well consider speeding up that portion of the video so that the viewer doesn't have to sit around while you take the time to handwrite the entire sentence. Now other times, let's say you're teaching an English course, it might make sense for you to leave it in real time so that the audience can track along with what you're writing and they can be mentally processing what you're going through as you're writing it down. It's up to you as the expert in your field to decide how much time you want to devote to each of the segments of whatever it is you're teaching. So consider speeding up or slowing down or even pausing the video at certain points within the editor in order to enhance the learning process for the viewers. Now, I hope some of these tips were helpful to you as you continue to create educational content for your viewers and for your students. I know for me, for the past two years, as the whole world has shut down through this pandemic, I've been forced to be nimble in my teaching, whether I'm teaching in person or remotely. And video has been a huge tool to allow me to continue to engage with my audience and with my students and to continue to share my passion uh, of strength and conditioning and sports science. So if that's you. If you are an educator or an influencer who is looking for more tools and tips and tricks to continue engaging via video, check out other videos in this series, my teach through video series that I have posted on my channel. And if you're used to the typical strength and conditioning and sports science content that I post here, stay tuned because I have more of that coming for you as well. Thanks for sticking around to the end, you guys, and I'll see you on the next video.